Here are three AI Coding Assistant prompt keywords you can use for fast, concise, AI-powered engineering. Let's start with our first keyword, mirror. I'll open up cursor. Inside this module, we have a function here, click on navbar. We're passing in a UI variable, and you can see here, based on whatever UI is passed in, we run arbitrary code. We run this add action function, and then we open up this modal here. So let's say we're adding a new feature, and we wanna add a new upgrade button to our navbar functionality. Using our AI coding assistant and the mirror keyword, we can get this done in just three words using this one shot prompt. I'm going to start an inline completion and all I'll say here is navbar upgrade mirror navbar community and that's it. I'll hit enter and let it generate. So as you can see here, we coded that faster than ever before. It mirrored the community and everywhere you see community here, it replaced it with the upgrade keyword, which is exactly what we wanted. We now have that action, we're mounting that new modal and then we're opening it. In a single one-shot prompt with three words, we've replaced writing this entire if block. It might seem like a small advantage, but over the course of an entire day of engineering, an entire week, you can see how this type of rapid use of our AI coding assistant will stack up massively over the long term, allowing you to do much more in less time. Let's look at another example of how we can use the mirror keyword. Here's another logical hook that lets us operate on table definitions. You can see here we have a simple computed property that is just returning all of the names of our tables. Let's go ahead and create a new property called column names. We'll do the exact same thing using our mirror keyword. So we'll come in here and we'll say column names, mirror, table names. And just so our AI coding system has the context of our types, we're going to add a reference to that file. And so our table definitions is inside of render types. And we'll just make sure that that is available to our coding assistant inside this prompt. We'll hit generate. Perfect. And you can see here it generated a 2D array. For each table, we have a list of the column names. Mirror is a very, very powerful keyword. You can use it to duplicate existing patterns, variables, functions, and even entire files. So let's move on to our second keyword, variable. A massive component of programming is creating state, creating variables. Being able to create and manipulate variables quickly gives you a massive advantage as an engineer. Let's go ahead and flatten our column name names and get them out of this 2D array here. So to activate the variable keyword, we're just going to type const. This lets our AI coding assistant know that we want it to create a variable. Now the question is, what type of variable do we want it to create? So what we'll say is const flat column names, and that's it. Perfect. So just with a single prompt here, const flat column names, it was able to infer exactly what we wanted. The key with this copilot prompting keyword is to make sure that you're communicating exactly what you want through your variable name. Let's look at another example, right? So we'll go ahead and accept that. So let's create another variable. We'll say const flat unique column names. Just by adding one additional keyword, our copilot was able to identify that we want a unique set of column names. And you can see here, this is just coming back as a single list now. We'll go ahead and accept this change. It's all about communicating exactly what you need to your LLM, to your AI coding assistant. And using the mirror and variable keywords can help you write your code in the blink of an eye. I also just want to shout out, you know, if you're on a massive code vendor and you've been, you know, coding for 30 days straight across hundreds of files, it really does help to see variable names like this. In an interesting way, using AI coding assistants efficiently by prompting exactly what you need by being really detailed with your variable names, with your functions names, it forces us to be more concise and precise without digging into the implementation details so much. That really goes along with an idea, a kind of principle that we hold on this channel. In the age of AI and LLMs and AI coding assistants, we want to be moving up the stack. We want to be prompting more. We want to be coding less. We want to engineer more like a product manager or a UX designer where we have higher level control over what we want to happen versus how it happens. Tons and tons of code has already been written. All the LLMs have it inside of their training set. Now it's all about learning to design the right prompt and get the results out as quickly as possible.
possible. And that's what these keywords help you do, especially our next keyword. But before we move on to the next keyword, that's going to add another powerful tool to your Copilot prompting toolbox. I just want to stop and say, you know, thank you so much for all the support. We are nearly at 10K subs, which is absolutely insane for a deep tech channel like this, where we don't just talk about the latest AI news hype cycle. We don't heavily edit on this channel. We keep it pretty bare and we really try to avoid heavy clickbait without true follow through. There are more than enough channels to do that. From the very beginning, almost 100 videos ago, posting one video every single week. I wanted this channel to be different. I wanted this channel to be real, something that you could go to to learn, see what's going on, see how you can take action on things, right? Here we think, plan, and build. We aim to use the best tool for the job. We dig into concrete examples. We use the latest great AI tools like Ader and Cursor, and we use these to build real software, right? Real production grade software faster than ever. I just want to say thank you. We are betting big on becoming agentic engineers that use the best AI tooling to build software that build software on our behalf. And using AI coding assistance is part of how we get there faster. It's part of how we iterate through our products. It's part of how we deliver value to our own personal work, our own personal tools, and of course, for our jobs and for our career. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of, you know, reiterate what the channel is all about. And I just want to say thank you so much. We're almost at 10K subs. It's really incredible to say that we're almost at 10K. We'll be here every single week, giving away something valuable for your engineering, for your engineering career. Now let's go ahead and talk about the next AI assistant prompt keyword function. So just like variables, functions are a critical aspect of engineering that enable you to encapsulate blocks of code into reusable modular pieces. With AI coding assistance, the function keyword gives you the ability to generate entire functions in a fraction of the time. Let me show you exactly how. So just like the variable keyword, we're gonna start with an inline prompt here with cursor and we're gonna write this function out piece by piece, detailing exactly what we want to have happen, right? So I'm gonna type function, get tables, matching string. And then I'm going to specify the parameters here. So I'm going to say dir to match. And then I'm going to say the type again. That's a little redundant, but just to be super clear. And then I'm also going to specify the return type, right? So stir and then as an array, right? I'm going to kick this off. Something really important to highlight here, just by reading the definition of this function, you can essentially guess with really high probability what exactly this is going to do. And that is a really, really critical aspect of one-shot prompting with your LLM. Can you, the engineer writing the prompt, know what should happen based on your prompt? If the answer is no, you should probably rewrite your prompt, right? But so just like that, we wrote this function, you know, we're gonna get tables matching the string. So we're looking through this list of table definitions, looking at our table names. And if our table name includes the string, we're going to filter and then we're going to return the table name. So this is pretty good. And in some cases, this is what you would want. But what we actually want is we wanna return any table that is inside of the string to match. And this is gonna happen, right? This is why it's so important that your AI coding assistant can iterate. If we hit Control Z here, we can get back into the state where we are writing follow-up instructions on this existing line. So we can take this function definition and say, filter table name is in sure to match. Nice, so this is more on the nose. We're actually reusing the table names computer property up here, and we're returning the table name that is included in the string. So we'll accept this change, and it's really crucial that the AI coding assistant can iterate because we'll make mistakes, it'll make mistakes, and we can resolve it just like that. So this is really great, really powerful. Let's go ahead and push this a step further. Let's create another function and add some more details to it, right? So let's say we want to make sure that our Let's say we wanna make sure that we don't care about our casing, right? We can do the exact same thing here. And with the function keyword, we can actually be more concise. So let's say get tables matching string, and then we'll also add no case. We'll say the same thing, string to match. We'll specify string, and then we'll also just go ahead and specify the return type once again. And we are taking a little shortcut here. As you saw, we're using str versus string. Our LLM is going to know that it should type out the full string. Here, we were able to compress our one-shot prompt even further by dropping the function and adding some more details into the function definition so that it knows exactly what we're looking for. So let's fire this off. Perfect, so exact same deal. And it added the two lowercase for us. 
If you wanted to, you could just iterate directly on this function. This is a really, really important, really mission critical tool in your arsenal. As you know, writing functions is a huge part of engineering. Let's push it one step further. Up till now, we've been using GPT-4 125. For this next example, we're going to use what has been shown to be the best in class model. We're going to be using Claude 3 Opus. So we'll bump the model. You might be thinking as we're working through this, you know, these are really simple function examples. You're totally right about that. We're still saving a lot of time, but these have been kind of simplified, more cherry picked examples, right? These are all things you can run in, you know, two or three lines. It's definitely giving you a huge speed improvement. Let's push our function keyword prompt even further to generate much more complex functionality. Let's say I want to enhance this function where we're passing in a string to match and returning our table names. We want to match table names on a string, but we also want to match on individual column names, right? So just like we did up here, we have our column names available. So we want to match on that as well. And we also want to run a Levenstein distance on every one of those possible fields. So both our table names and our column names. You can think of Levenstein distance as just a way to match how similar a string is. So let's go ahead and prompt that out using the function prompt keyword. So we'll say get tables matching string. And we're just going to leave it with a more simplified name. And then we'll specify some parameters here. We'll say string to match, just like as before. We'll specify the return type. And then what we'll do is we'll start creating these bullet points where we specify more details about our function, right? So we'll come in here and we'll say case insensitive. So I'm hitting, you know, shift enter there to not fire off the prompt yet, but add some new lines. I'll say also match column names, but only return parent tables. And then lastly, and this is where things get really powerful. I'll say Levenstein distance, string one, string two, and then I'll say distance equals one. So we're just gonna set a default. And so let's fire this off. Let's see how Claude 3 Opus performs here. So it's doing some thinking. Interestingly, it automatically bumped the function name because the previous function name was already taken up here. So it's being very context aware. And you can see here, it is rolling through this. It's using this new Levenstein distance function, which doesn't exist, created that. And yeah, yeah, this looks really, really great. So it created a brand new Levenstein distance function. And let's just quickly read through this. Okay, nice. And it's doing the deletion, insertion, substitution here. And then it's checking the max distance that we're passing in, which is gonna be one. So this is pretty incredible. We have a top level function prompt, right? Where we're specifying what exactly we want to happen. There's enough information inside the function name, the parameter and the return type for our coding assistant to get started. We're then specifying details of the function, right? So we're saying case insensitive. So you can see here, we have all these lower case checks, perfect. We're saying we also want to match on our column names. You can see here we're looping through the column names as well, which is perfect. So it picked up on that type. That's great. And then it's running the Levenstein distance, which doesn't exist. So it sees that. It still prototypes the code out. And then below, Claude then builds out this Levenstein distance function. I've been spending a lot of time pushing these AI coding assistants to the limit, seeing how much I can get out of them. And these three prompt keywords are a majority of the prompts I'm running right now when I'm using AI coding assistants. I wanted to share this with you because there's a ton of value here. As you can see, when you build out the right prompts, when you give it the right context, and when you're concise with your prompts, not giving it the wrong information, not giving it too much or too less information, but just what it needs, it's able to perform really, really well. I gotta say, I've been using and playing around with Claude Opus, and it is incredible. Just like all the benchmarks and just like the LLM ecosystem is saying, the Opus model is outperforming GPT-4 for now. We all know that OpenAI is coming out with their next generation model this year. So right now, Claude 3 Opus is in first place, but we know that that's likely to change. It's great to see competition with these top end models. As we've explored today, you know, your AI coding assistant is much more powerful than you think it is, especially with the keywords mirror, variable, and function. Since they offer you powerful shortcuts for engineering tasks, they can truly transform the way that you write code. These tools not only save you time, but enhance our ability to think clearly about problems by defining variables and functions clearly enough for a coding assistant to understand them, which interestingly has this side effect of being more readable for us. When Opus created this brand new function name because it saw the conflict here, that was a great simple addition, right? Get tables matching string fuzzy. That's a legit function name that we would actually use in a production code base, right? So this is really great. Levenstein distance is here. Really incredible to see that come out of a single prompt. 
coding assistants allow us to focus more on designing solutions rather than getting bogged down by implementation details. Especially when you're prompting code that's already been written, like the Levenstein distance, your AI coding assistant is going to have that information. All you need to do is prompt it the right way. There is a really important medium with AI coding assistants. Let's go ahead and control Z back to that prompt. There's a really important kind of middle ground that you want to hit, right? If you're typing too much, especially when you're writing these shorter functions and you find yourself just writing this like big, massive prompt, you know, three sentences, one paragraph long prompt, it's almost like you should just go ahead and write that code anyway, right? Which you don't want. You don't even want to be in that position. So using these keywords, and there are definitely other keywords that can be utilized here. Mirror, variable, and function are just the three that I've found to be the most useful in the most use cases. And as we discover them, I will definitely share them on the channel. You want to be in that middle ground where you're giving the LLM enough information and enough context to solve your problem, but you also don't want to be spending a ton of time prompt engineering. And that's where these Copilot one-shot prompt keywords are especially effective. So just as a recap, use mirror when you want to replicate patterns. Use the variable keyword with a more verbose name when you want to define variables and properties. And then finally, use a function keyword with parameters and with return type in a function prototype-like syntax to give you a powerful shortcut for your engineering tasks. If you need to push the function keyword even further, use the bullet point syntax just like we did here, where you can get into this recursive scenario where you can also, inside your bullet points, define additional function, define additional variables, and even use the mirror keyword in here as well. I'll see you in the next one where we'll continue to deep dive into the best AI coding tooling and techniques available that make us better engineers in the age of AI. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated. Let's blast through 10K subs. Stay focused, keep building, and I'll see you in the next one.